Introduction to Node.js. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime and a suite of package management software tools. It also provides command line access for running JavaScript code. It comes with three main command line tools we're going to focus on as part of mobile development. Node, which runs JavaScript code from files. NPM, Node Package Manager, which creates projects, installs packages, and removes those already installed. And finally, NPX, Node Package Runner. The X in this case stands for Execute. It runs projects instead of installing them and is used to generate projects based on templates. We're going to look at that a lot later, but these are the three main command line tools we're going to focus on. This video is going to focus particularly on NPM. NPM has three general modes, three arguments we're going to focus on. NPM INIT, which creates a new package.json file for initializing a new node project. NPM install X, where X is the name of a package we want to install, which will install that package in node underscore modules directory and add it to the file, which we'll look at. And NPM uninstall X, which removes a package and everything that package depends on. So let's move over to Visual Studio Code and look at some of these in action. So over here, I have Visual Studio Code set up. I have the directory mobile development already opened, and I don't currently have a terminal open, so I can go to terminal, new terminal. And because I'm using git bash as my default shell, it's opened bash, which it's told me, and has it open right here to the same project folder. So, okay, we want to initialize a new node project. This is npm init, npm space init, then press enter. This is utility that will walk us through creating a package.json file. It only covers the most common items and tries to make sensible guesses at default values. So at this time, I'm not going to change any of the default values, but I'm just going to look at them as they go by. So the very first one is the package name. What is the name of this project? It's assumed the default value is the same name as a directory mobile development. That's fine. I'm going to press enter. What's the version? I'm going to accept its default value. No description, default entry point, no test commands, no Git repositories, no keywords, no author, and accept ISC as the default license. And it said, hey, I'm about to write this to a package.json file in the current directory. Is this everything you want? If it is, and the default's yes, we'll press enter. So, okay, it created over here a package.json file. This gives us a chance to talk a little bit about Visual Studio's code's auto code detection and a little bit about how it understands files. It understands this is a JSON file that is a JavaScript JS object notation JSON. So, it notice it leaves little curly brackets in front of it. So, if I click on it, I know this is a JSON file. I know because Visual Studio Code has attempted to guess based on the end of the file name, JSON, and has put it down here at the bottom right hand corner. It says, okay, you're using JSON, you're using JavaScript object notation. Visual Studio Code is also smart enough to realize this is a package.json file, and if I put my cursor over these keys, will tell us what they mean. Notice version, description, down here author, license. So it's pretty smart and we'll say, okay, I understand you're using a JSON file. I also understand you're using a very particular type of JSON file, a package.json file as part of a node project. So it's smart enough to detect those two things and give us information about it. So the next thing we want to cover after we've initialized a new node project is to actually install a package. So again, we do that by going back to npm, npm space install, install, then in the name of the package I want to install. In this case, chalk, C-H-A-L-K. I'm going to press enter. It 
It's going to go look at the remote repository of NPM projects. It's going to find chalk. It's going to look at everything chalk depends on. Then it's going to install all of those packages, verify them all, and then tell us the information about it. In fact, it did all of that before I could even say all of those words. So it added seven packages from four contributors. It checked them all, audited them, and it did everything in 1.358 seconds. So less than two seconds it did for all of that. Let's scroll up a little bit though. It said, oh, notice I've created a new lock file as package-lock.json. You should commit this file. So if we were pushing to a remote repository, we would commit this file. And it gave us a couple of warnings. It says, hey, you don't have a description of what this project is. You also don't have a repository field for this project, which again are warnings, not errors, just general warnings. It's just giving us information to say, hey, just as a general check, you should probably add a description to this. And if this was a project that would move past this, we would actually do that. So, okay. We've added seven packages from four contributors. It was audited and everything happened in less than two seconds. So let's move up here and check out the package hyphen lock file it created. So it has the name of the project, mobile development, which again, it pulled from package.json, its version, information it pulled. And then it installed both chalk and everything chalk needs to run. So it installed a total of seven packages and notice it lists these as dependencies. So the exact name of the package, its exact version, where it is found, and then the integrity or a checksum. So when NPM installs packages, it goes and grabs the package from the remote server. It also grabs a checksum for that package. It then downloads that package and then runs it against the checksum. So why is it doing this? Well, this is a protection for all users. In the past, there were some attacks where if a person knew exactly what package you were looking for, it could then mid transit send you malicious code. And then your end, you would not know that and would start running that malicious code. Now it says, okay, go look for this file. And here's exactly what this file should be with its checksum. So now all projects are audited, checked against using its integrity when it downloads. So it did it all again, seven packages in less than two seconds. As we get into much, as we get into installing many more packages, in fact, thousands of packages, the time will get a lot longer and may take up to a couple of minutes depending on everything we do. But in this case, seven packages downloaded them all and told us exactly where it is and the checksum for all of these. Fantastic. The other thing it generated was a node underscore modules directory. So we click on that. It shows us everything it downloaded, all of these projects, including chalk. And again, the six other packages it needs so it can run. So fantastic. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is removing a package. So we initialized a new node project using NPM space INIT. We initialized a new node project. We installed a package using npm install x, where x was the name of a package we wanted to install, in this case, chalk. Finally, we're going to remove a package, so npm uninstall, and then the name of the package to uninstall, chalk chalk. Now, keep in mind, when we uninstall a package, it uninstalls the package and everything that package installed. So... If we do this, notice it removed all seven packages. So chalk and everything it installed, a total of seven packages, it did it all in less than a second. Again, found no vulnerabilities because it double checked everything for us and gave us the same general warnings again. Hey, you don't have a description. You don't have a repository field, which is fine right now. So, okay, let's do that one more time npm install chalk because again it will take less than two seconds to do this and let's look at one more thing so i focus this on the directory let's now focus on package.json anytime we install something it gets added to the object dependencies so everything has a name for that project and its version 
So notice this is chalk and it says up to 4.1.0, which we see down here is the exact version we added. So anytime we're adding projects, that is we explicitly add projects, not things that depend that on which that project depends, but we explicitly add projects to what we're working on, packages that is, when we explicitly add packages to a project, we see, okay, it then gets added as a dependency for that project. Now, the reason why this is important is because sometimes we will be given just the files of a project without its node underscore modules directory. In fact, this is the very common occurrence. And so if that were to happen, and in fact, I can fake it by deleting this. So now, again, I don't have anything installed as far as NPM is aware. But I want to say, okay, I want to use this project and I want it based on its packages. So if we don't have node underscore modules, which again is actually fairly common, we can type npm install with nothing else and press enter. npm install will then look at package.json and regenerate the node underscore modules directory, reinstalling anything that we told it to install, in this case chalk, and everything chalk depends on, which is seven more packages, which it just regenerated for us in less than a second. So again, very useful if we don't have node underscore modules, we can run npm install, which will look at package.json, look at its dependencies, go through them one by one by one. In this case, we only have a single one, download everything that it needs and set it all back up for us. So let's review everything we've talked about. Node.js has, or Node.js has a whole bunch of stuff. And it's a runtime for JavaScript. It's also a suite of package management tools, as we've seen. So it has three commands that we really care about that we're going to look at over the space of mobile development. The first of which is Node, which we haven't looked at yet. The second, which was NPM, which we looked at extensively in this video using NPM INIT to initialize a new Node project. NPM install X, where X was the name of a project we wanted to install, as well as NPM uninstall X to uninstall that package and everything it installed, it depends on. And then finally, NPM install with nothing else following that to look at a package.json file, look at its dependencies, and then download all of those packages, resetting a project back up to be run. So this covers the introduction to node.js. As we get more into greater detail about what we're doing and working with more tools as part of mobile development, we'll talk a little bit about using Node.js and especially Node and a little later NPX to speed up our development processes.